the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 241 2 Chronicles 32 to 33 The final for Manasseh, who worshipped the idols. Manasseh, who gave up all the reform of Hezekiah, his father, tempted the people to do evil. First point, Chronicles records how Hezekiah relied on God and thus was able to win against Assyria's second attack. During those times, Assyria was the most powerful country among the ancient Near East for 520 years and with their expanding power. They took captives from their surrounding countries, including North Israel. They wanted to conquer over South Judah also, and so they attacked. Different to the record in the Book of Kings, Chronicles records how Hezekiah was able to win against Assyria's attack, as he relied on God. When Assyria attacked the first time round, Hezekiah had to scrape the gold from the Jerusalem temple in order to offer it as tribute. But Assyria came to attack them again. To prepare for Assyria's second attack, Hezekiah carried out construction work so that the Assyrian soldiers would not be able to drink water from outside Jerusalem. To the people of South Judah who feared for their lives, Hezekiah told them not to fear as God would be with them. Assyria continued to threaten South Judah and also mocked God. The field command of Assyria mocked God publicly and tried to turn the people of South Judah away from God. Assyria needed South Judah to quickly surrender as they were preparing for battle with Cush. Hezekiah sincerely prayed to God. The Book of Kings is recorded from the view of how Hezekiah was persuaded by Isaiah to see God's management of the world. And Chronicles is recorded from the view of how Hezekiah prayed to God and of his rescue. With God's help, the Assyrian soldiers, who were doing well, suddenly experienced 185,000 of their soldiers dying overnight. Because of this instant, God's glory spread all throughout South Judah and the surrounding countries. South Judah became the only country Assyria could not conquer. Second point, Chronicles records how God tested Hezekiah. After blocking Assyria's attack, Hezekiah fell ill. Hezekiah therefore prayed to God and God granted him a miracle. But Hezekiah became arrogant because of this and forgot about God's miracle. Consequently, God's anger burned against Hezekiah. Hezekiah realized this, and he and the people of South Judah repented before God. God heard their repentance and postponed their punishment. Hezekiah was given 15 years extra to live. The reason Hezekiah became arrogant was because 185,000 Assyrian soldiers died, and the surrounding countries started to pay tribute to South Judah. However, he failed to recognize that this was due to God's blessing and not his personal achievement. Hezekiah posted of this to the Babylonian officials. Indeed, Hezekiah was unable to pass God's test. Although he sinned against God, God postponed the punishment of South Judah, and then Hezekiah died. Third point, the fourth king of Judah, Manasseh, was known for the worst idol worshiping king. After Hezekiah died, his 12-year-old son Manasseh became the next king. Manasseh's reign was ironic to say the least. 
Although his father Hezekiah led the people out from idol worship, Manasseh very quickly turned to idol worship. He re-established the temples of Baal and Asherah, which his father tore down. He himself worshipped an idol of the sky. He placed altars of idols in the Jerusalem temple, and furthermore involved himself with magicians. This behavior spread through all of South Judah, and the people were quickly influenced. Because of this, there was no way he could escape God's judgment. Fourth point, Manasseh's repentance is only recorded in Chronicles and not in the Book of Kings. Chronicles records Manasseh's repentance, which cannot be found in the Book of Kings. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. So the Lord brought against them the army commanders of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh prisoner, put a hook in his nose, bound him with the bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. God declared that Assyria would invade South Judah, and Manasseh would be taken as a captive, bound in iron chains. He would be taken like a wild beast. In other words, Manasseh would be mocked like no other. Manasseh therefore repented and God granted him mercy. The Book of Kings records that Manasseh's sins became the reason for South Judah's fall. However, Chronicles emphasizes that David's descendant Manasseh repented and was thus able to escape being taken as a captive. After he repented, he stood as a new man in front of God. He changed six things after repenting. The first was that the Jerusalem temple and the walls of Judah became solely defied. The second was that the idols were taken down. The third was that the temple's food idols were taken down. The fourth was that God's altar was restored. The fifth was that the fellowship offering was made in the temple. The sixth was that the people of South Judah served God. Despite all this, as Manasseh had spread the idols so widely and deeply, they could not get rid of all the idols. And idol worship inevitably continued. Fifth point, Manasseh's son Ammon worshipped idols for the two years he was king. Manasseh ruled for 55 years, and his son Ammon took over as the 15th king of South Judah. Ammon's sins can be found in 2 Chronicles 33, verses 22 to 23. During the two short years he was in power, Ammon went all out with the idol worship and did not repent until the very end. Ammon was killed by his servants, but as the people of South Judah wished to maintain David's monarchy, Ammon's son, Josiah, was crowned as the next king. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondok app. The Tondok app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer and you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondok app.